from beyond, then that's the pre-digital age. So it's very difficult to do uh, monsters. And in fact, when we decided on that story, it was because it had a machine in it. And it, we thought this was going to be more saleable. There was this machine that you could sell. Um, but the Lovecraft story, actually, we used up the Lovecraft story by the main titles. The whole, story, the whole Lovecraft short story takes place in the prologue to that movie. And then the movie becomes some kind of an, an action movie of some sort of explorers in another dimension. And the, for example, the um, great monster at the end was, was we were trying to do the Shogath from, um, from the uh, Mountains of Madness. And the original drawings were done by Bernie Wrightson on that. Today, you could actually realize his drawings. Back then, we had to carve it out of um, out of uh, plastic. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it was it, it's pretty it's pretty clumsy right now. But we had a lot of fun doing it. And of course, we just added all kinds of stuff. The theme that um, I would say that was between Stewart and Dennis Paoli who did the actual screenplay. I, did, I, I wrote the story with the, with the two of them. Um, but I think that the theme that they came up with for Dr. Pretorius, which was actually lifted from the Bride of Frankenstein, if you remember the original Bride of Frankenstein, Dr. Pretorius is the one that has the famous quote about a world of gods and monsters, you know. And so this character wasn't in the in the short story, it was Crawford Tillingus that was actually the Dr. Victoria's character. But the theme of a, of a man who, for whom the senses are not enough, who wants to go further, um, this, is, this became the theme of that movie. And, that, um, <clears throat> and we took from the short story the idea of the pineal gland um, being able to see another dimension gimmick is that if you can see it, they can see you and they're hungry. So I think this was really good writing more than anything else by the, by the screenwriters. And the rest of it, it, today if you look at it, it's pretty clumsy, the effects. We had to make a big giant lamprey worm. Uh, well today you could do it digitally, it looked really great. We had to actually build it <laughs> and it doesn't move very much. So these types of effects get to be tricky. The, the idea of the pineal gland coming out of Jeffrey Combs' forehead, of course he always said that he always um, complained that we were giving him a dark dick in his forehead and we assured him it wasn't that. Um, the, this type of thing today also would be much easier. We had to put a big kind of a helmet on his head so that there was a big mechanism to move it. Today, you could make that um, very easily with um, digital effects. So I think that, um, I think those movies, they, I think they, they work more from the writing and the directing than from the effects. The effects are, are a little bit clumsy from the 80s and 90s. Uh, Bride of Reanimator, we had to make the little hand-eye creature <clears throat> with stop motion. Well, today it would be so easy to do it with a digital 3D. But there's kind of a, um, a charm, I think, in puppetry, and I think people always respond to it.